Good day everyone and welcome to our learning hub. I am Jumari Akdan and I am with Jessalyn Ortiz and Jerica Siriban. For today's video, we're gonna discuss to you guys the justice and fairness promoting the common good. And on this topic, we're also gonna tackle the nature of theory and distributive justice. At the end of this lesson, we will be able to differentiate between justice and fairness, describe the different kinds of justice, apply Rose's theory of justice in life situations and to the society, and discover how distributive justice apply Rose's theory. Now let's start our adventure. The fairness or justice approach to ethics has its roots in the teachings of the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle, who said that equals should be treated equally and unequals unequally. Fairness has been the focus of many public policy arguments. It is asked if how fair is an action. Does it treat everyone in the same way or does it show favoritism and discrimination? Let me introduce to you who is John Rawls? John Rawls is a popular 20th century philosopher. He was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland in the year 1921. Rawls studied at Princeton University and proceeded to teach at Oxford, Harvard, and MIT. In 1971, he published a theory of justice in which this moral work of Rawls attempts to develop a standard of principles that could create a fair and just society. So to further dig into our topic, let's hear it from Jerica Siriban about justice and fairness. Arguments about justice or fairness have a long tradition in Western civilization. They got no idea why Western civilization has been more consistently linked to ethics and morality than the idea of justice. But, in the theory of justice written by the late Harvard philosopher John, John Rawls, every major work on ethics has held that justice is part of the central core of morality. Justice means giving each or what he or she deserves or... In more traditional terms, giving each person his or her due. Fairness is the freedom from prejudice and quality of treating people equally. Justice and fairness has a very narrow relationship and are often used interchangeably. However, they also have a distinct understandings. Justice focuses mostly on the standards and rules of our current justice system or with reference to a standard of rightness on the other hand fairness is used with regard to an ability to judge without reference to one's feelings or interests it is also been used to refer to the ability to make more judgments that are not overly general but that are concrete and specific to a particular case in in any case, a motion of being treated as one deserves is crucial to both justice and fairness. Questions about justice or fairness arise when people differ over what they believe should be given, or decisions about the distribution of benefits is made. In fact, ethicists believe that there is no point of talking about justice and fairness if it were not for the conflicts of scarcity in goods and services. So, with these questions about justice or fairness, principles of justice are applied. The most accepted principle is defined by Aristotle. It says that equals should be treated equally and unequals unequally. In its contemporary form, this principle is sometimes expressed as Individuals should be treated the same unless they differ in ways that are relevant to the situation in which they are involved. For example, in a recent typhoon calamity, Santa's family decided to help the area who got affected by the typhoon. 
They give relief goods in all families, but they also help one poor family in terms of financial assistance. Because their house has been carried away by the flood, while other families are not. However, many differences that we deem as justifiable criteria for treating people differently. For example, we think it is fair when the person who is first in a line at a theater is given first choice of theater tickets. Another example is, we think it is just when the government gives benefits to the needy that it does not provide to more affluent citizens. On the other hand, there are also some criteria that are not justifiable in giving treatment to people. For example, if the judge's nephew receives a suspended sentence for armed robbery when another offender unrelated to the judge goes to jail for the same crime. Another example is, we believe that it's unfair when a person is punished for something over which he or she had no control, or isn't compensated for a harm he or she suffered. Now let's talk about the different kinds of justice. First is distributive justice. This refers to the extent to which society's institutions ensure that benefits and burdens are distributed among society's members in ways that are fair and just. For example, a company hires its employees in disregard of their race or color, and they pay them in terms of their effort of working. Second is retributive justice. This refers to the extent to which punishments are fair and just. In general, Punishments are held to be just to the extent that they take into relevant criteria such as the seriousness of the crime and the intent of the criminal, and disregard irrelevant criteria such as race. For example, it is unjust to chop off a person's hand for stealing a dime. Another scenario is, when blacks murder white, they are much more likely to receive death sentences than when white murders. The third and last justice is compensatory justice. This refers to the extent to which people are fairly compensated for their injuries by those who have injured them. Just compensation is proportional to the loss inflicted on a person. For example, mine owners should compensate the workers whose health has been ruined. But, Others argue that workers voluntarily took the risk of their job. The foundation of justice can be traced to the notions of social stability. As the ethicist John Rose has pointed out, the stability of a society or any group depends upon the extent to which the members of that society feel that they are being treated justly. When some of society's members come to feel that they are subjects to unequal treatment, the foundations have been laid for social unrest, disturbances, and strife. The members of a community will retain their social unity only to the extent that their institutions are just. Now let's move on and discuss the nature of theory. The nature of theory or Rawls' theory of justice. John Rawls' theory of justice attempts to explain why clear social inequalities are unjust and what a just society really is. As we can see, Rawls' theory of justice is both a work of ethics and politics. Hence, we can glean from Rose's theory of justice some kind of an ethical theory. From one, in his theory of justice, Rose attempts to address the problem of distributive justice. In what follows, these notes will briefly sketch the key concepts of Rose's theory of justice. Here are some basic principles of Rose's theory of justice. Rose believed that a just society is one whose characteristics conform to normative rules that everyone would agree. This explains why Rawls' theory of justice 
begins by introducing the fundamental principle that every individual is inviolable. Rawls writes that each person possesses an inviolability founded on justice that even the welfare of the state cannot override. Meaning that every one of us has a right that should not be dishonored, not evenly the higher welfares. Therefore, the rights secured by justice are not subject to political bargaining or to the calculus of social interest. So from this fundamental principle, we can draw the following implications. The first implication for roles is life should not be sacrificed for the sake of the majority. For example, suppressing the people's right to speech and expression for the sake of economic growth is morally wrong for roles. Another example is dictating people for who they vote in an election. As we can see, Rose's theory of justice directly attacks consequentialist ethics. Most especially the most notable representative, which is utilitarianism. Because the goal of utilitarian is to produce the most benefit for society as a whole. It is like they suppress the rights of the people in order to attain what they think is good for the majority. The second implication for roles is that an erroneous theory is tolerable in the absence of a good one. Thus, roles believe that an unjust law is better than no law at all. In other words, an act of injustice is tolerable if and only if it is necessary to avoid greater act of injustice. For example, it might be morally right to incapacitate or kill a notorious killer if it is the only way to stop him from killing more innocent people. Now the third implication is that individual liberties should be restricted in order to maintain equality of opportunity. For roles, restrictions through law preserves freedom in democracy. For example, it is probably morally right to restrict people from owning than 5 hectares of agricultural lot so that other people will have the chance to own a lot. So, this is like giving limit to the liberties in order to give chance to others. With those implications, Rawls come up with two basic principles of justice. These two basic principles of justice are expressions of what Rawls calls justice as fairness. The first principle put emphasis on equal access to the basic human needs, rights, and liberties. Rawls called this the equal liberty principle. This principle guarantees the right of each person to have the extensive basic liberty. Some examples of this right are the right to life, the right to vote, the right to speech, and the right to peaceable assembly. Now, the second principle emphasizes the idea of fair equality of opportunity and equal distribution of socioeconomic inequalities. Meaning, that is to give the greatest expected benefit to the least advantaged members of society. Rawls called this the difference principle. This principle implies that social and economic positions are to be everyone's advantage and open to all. But how can such principles be universally adopted? Or how can we actualize Rawls' theory of justice? It is here where Rawls' notions of the veil of ignorance and the original position come in. Rawls introduces the theoretical veil of ignorance in which all players in the social game will be placed in a hypothetical situation called the original position. Rawls suggests that in the original position, each individual does not know her sex, race, natural abilities, social status, economic conditions, and the like. In other words, in the original position, 
individuals hide their identity behind the veil of ignorance. According to Rawls, out of this veil of ignorance, each individual makes a rational prudential choice concerning the kind of social institution they would enter into contract with. As we can see, Rawls appears to be a moral contractarian, and his theory of justice is in itself a kind of social contract. Rawls recommend that individuals in the veil of ignorance ought to adopt a generalized moral point of view. And according to Rawls, if everybody in the original position promotes equality, then justice as fairness is attained. If not, then injustice prevails. Justice as fairness is achieved through the notions of the original position and the veil of ignorance. In the original position, individuals agree on specific social rules and institutions. And in the veil of ignorance, individuals choose the basic structure of society that they thought is just. This is possible because Rawls argues that selfish but rational people who are detached from their concrete identity and context will freely choose to create a society that is truly just. In fact, Rawls believes that through the veil of ignorance, individuals can identify universal beliefs about how society should be organized. Distributive Justice Distributive justice is a key ethical principle that concerns the socially just allocations of resources and the fair distribution of money and possessions. As a part of being a member of a modern society is accepting that all good will be distributed through society by some means. In kingdoms and empires, the monarch would own all goods but permit his or her people to enjoy them in his or her name, meaning there is the central force which owns all goods. Distributive justice addresses who owns these goods and how they are acquired. It assumes that there is a large amount of fairness in the distribution of goods. Equal work should provide individuals with an equal outcome in terms of goods acquired or the ability to acquire goods. There are three principles of distributive justice. One is equality. Equality. Equality affects two areas of distributive justice. One is opportunities and two is outcomes. Equality of opportunity is found when all members of a society are allowed to participate in acquiring goods. While equality of outcome describes a state which people have approximately the same material wealth. This states that distributive justice is absent when equal work does not produce equal outcomes or when an individual or a group acquires a misappropriate amount of goods. Number 2. Proportionality It is based around the idea that equal work produces equal outcome. This principle is commonly interpreted as saying that income should be distributed proportionally to individual effort. Example of proportionality is, two people can work 12 hours in different work environments, so their concept of who work harder or who deserves a greater amount of goods varies. Number 3. Fairness Fairness is the backbone of the principle of equality and proportionality. This fairness will be achieved if equality in, in the aspect of opportunity and outcome reigns and proportionality is highly observed. There are also theories of distributive society. And number one is roles justice as fairness. Any inequalities in a society should benefit the least advantage and equal and fair opportunity reigns. Number two, utilitarianism. 
it attempts to maximize benefits for society by balancing entitlement and needs. Number three, egalitarianism. Inequalities should be deemed fair as long as they follow from individuals' deliberate and fully informed choices, while inequalities should be deemed unfair if they follow from choices over which the individual has no control. Distributive justice certainly is achieved when individuals receive the same allocations of benefits. Some examples of distributive justice are the following. State services provide social insurance or medical care to all aged and retired citizens. Another example is public school, where all children have equal chances to attend for learning. Now, let us see what are the strengths and weaknesses of distributive justice. Strengths of distributive justice Protects many a just workplace encourages ethical decisions by workers. Weaknesses of distributive justice Practically ignores individual efforts and discourages differences. Ignores other rights such as inheritance. Justice as fairness then is a central part of ethics and should be given due consideration in our moral lives. In evaluating any moral decision, we must ask whether our actions treat all persons equally and fair. Are the criteria we are using relevant to the situation at hand or not? But as Rawls' theory of justice said, a fair and just society will be achieved if the society itself treats its citizens freely, equally, and fairly. That's all for today's lesson, and in behalf of my core reporters, I am Jumari Akdan, reminding you to continue learning and never say never. Thank you again for listening, have a nice day, and keep safe.